was born in Morton, Illinois, on Broadway Road, ten, uh, three miles south of Morton at, at that time. Now, of course, the village has come out that way. <laughs> and there were two and a half dozen in our family. Wow. Like that recent is, relatives? Or like that is, I had two sisters and a half a dozen of us Henri boys. Oh, that's a huge family. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, my mother died when she was 39. I was 13. And of course we, dad kept us all together and we uh, worked we had to give our money home till we were 21. All of us did, and uh, <clears throat> had to work, but I didn't get to go to high school. Fact is, none of the children went to high school except the two youngest ones, two youngest boys, and uh, that was because they uh, passed a law that. You had to go to school when you were 16 years old, so they got they got to go to high school. And uh, <clears throat> of course, I was I was drafted into the army in January '42, and uh, I was inducted up at. Rockford, Illinois, at Camp Grant, where the medics had their basic training. I went in as an NCO, but my papers didn't follow me, so I got transferred out to Fort Riley, Kansas, and assigned to the Horse Cavalry. And there were seven of us in that same situation that were NCOs and that was a combat outfit out there at Fort Riley and they didn't know what to do with us. Can you explain what NCOs are? I've never heard of the term. Right. You never heard that term? No. That's a non-combatant service. Okay. And you could serve as a, as a medic, you know, and didn't have to carry any guns. Oh, so you were a medic. Yeah. I, well, I was, we got transferred back then eventually, and after about three weeks, then they got us back to Camp Grant, and we, we finished up basic training there with the other inductees that we were sent up there with, and uh, after basic, I was assigned to Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio, and my buddy was assigned to Patterson Field at Dayton, Ohio, and at that time they were two separate fields. Patterson Field was an overseas replacement depot, and Wright Field was an experimental and research base. So. My buddy was Harvey Lehman from Force. He wasn't there long, he got shipped overseas. And I was there for the duration. Were you friends before that? Or were you friends because you Pardon? were drafted? Were you friends before that? Or were you friends because you were drafted? Like, did you meet him while you were at basic? Or were you well, friends before Well, I knew him before. That? Before that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up together? No, he was from Force, Illinois. Okay. And I was from Morton, Illinois, but we knew each other before. And uh, so I was one of the fortunate ones. I got to, didn't have to go overseas. I got to spend the duration there at Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio. I was there over three and a half years. And during that time, I, uh, accepted the Lord and uh, it was in the Apostolic Christian Church 
and the nearest he I'm going to call it the AC Church was a uh, hundred miles away at Laddie, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we got weekends off and we're up there pretty regular. And little little did I know at that time that I'd be having a daughter living there now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, so then uh, in 44, I, I got a furlough every year, got, got to go home. I'm not sure this was a, a, a week or two weeks or how long it was anymore, but I got that furlough every year. And in 44, well, I got home and got married. <laughs> And, and my wife got to move out to Dayton, Ohio there, and we uh, rented a basement apartment in town. We got to live in town. I got to live in town, and she got a mm -hmm. job in a small defense plant there. So that worked out real well. Then uh, I got out in December 45. I was assigned to the flight surgeon's office, which gave physical exams to flying personnel. I was helping in that office, giving physical exams to flying personnel. It had to have a physical every six months, pass a physical every six months to remain on flying status. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I, what I did there. So you were, you said you were um, in Dayton, Ohio for three years, but like what were some of the things that you did there? Were, was it pretty relaxed or were they very strict about certain things? You know, they, like I say, we got to live off the post, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have to go out to the post every, every day, like going to a job, you know. Mm -hmm. And after five o'clock, I'd get to go back home, you know. So that was your job? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then I got out in December 45, and that's the month our first son was born. Oh, wow. And my wife was from Roanoke here, and we moved up to Roanoke then, in 46, and I worked for a, a building contractor in 46. And then in 47, we moved to Cisna Park, Illinois, where my wife had an uncle that was farming and he retired, didn't have any children. So I got to move on that place and farmed there for seven years. And uh, there were three heirs that owned that place. And one of the heirs wanted to farm it then, so I had to move. Mm -hmm. And so we moved back to Roanoke here. And it just so happened that my brother-in-law was farming the home place. And he decided to quit farming, so I got got that farm then. That's that's the place that I own to this day. Yeah. And so uh, I farmed there then for another, let's see, seven, probably a little over, a little over thirty years there. Yeah. Or I retired and I moved to town here. I uh, I uh, help farmers in the fall harvest their crops. You know, I hauled in more corn or more grain than that I did all the years I was farming because when I was farming, we had corn pickers and filled corn, corn cribs and, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd, I'd be busy at the farm 
shelling corn and have to hire trucks to haul yeah. my grain to town. So that's how that worked out. So when you were first drafted, how old were you? Did you say? I see. I think I was about twenty six or somewhere 26. in there. So I know um, I've talked to someone before about the Vietnam War, and he had said, um, and I know you were with World War II, but he had said that um, when they were drafted, it was more of like people didn't want them to go to war. People thought the Vietnam War was like um, wasn't needed; it was a waste of time. So like that, those were the feelings that people had when they were drafted. But for the World War II, what were the feelings? Were you honored to be drafted? Were you? scared that you'd be sent overseas. Tell me a little bit about that. <clears throat> no, we just accepted whatever whatever happened and mm -hmm. made the best of it. Because I know some uh, people have said that it was like, it was almost like an honor to be drafted. Like the younger men wanted to be sent to war to protect their country. Did you feel the same way? Or? Well, not necessarily. I... Uh, I didn't really want to go, but uh, since I was drafted, and I just, you know, wanted to do my duty. Mm -hmm. That No, yeah, that definitely makes sense. So um, you had mentioned before that you went to your post for the day and then you were allowed to go home or you were, like, you were done for that job. What, what do you mean by that? What kind of things did you do um, while you were in Dayton um, as a soldier? Office work. <laughs> like, like, why did you have to? Well, the the uh, personnel would come in for physical exams, mm -hmm. you know, and we'd have to take their pulse and blood pressure and, mm -hmm. and uh, see that they were in physical shape, you know. Yeah. To put them that they could fly. And, Right. Be on flying status. So you were the person that had to check if they were healthy or not. Was that your main job, or did you uh, did you do other yeah, things? See if they could pass the physical yeah. for flying. Yeah. Do you know why you were picked for that job? Was it like a random selection? Was um, did you have previous? Yeah, like, it was just random. They medicine? needed they needed somebody for that for that work, and so I I was put yeah. on that job. Did you get to pick that, or did you? Were you just selected randomly? Oh, I, I think I was just selected, you know. Yeah. That's I, when I first went in, I, I wasn't. I was assigned to the Aeromedical Lab Research Laboratory, and that was a. That was a. word right now that it was a not a vehicle but a housing that never left the ground and yet it had the pressure pressure in there like if you were going up mm -hmm. high altitude and my ears wouldn't stand the pressure on that so I then I was uh, transferred from that job to the flight line and drove an ambulance for a while until uh, I had a cyst that had to be removed and to go to the hospital. And of course, when I got back, why well, I wasn't able to drive an ambulance, so that's that's when I got transferred to this uh, physical yeah. uh, job here. So you never physical exam job. So you never actually had to go on the battlefield or get shipped overseas. No. You never were you were you ever close to having to do that or? Well, one weekend we were we were gone, and they needed they needed men to be shipped overseas, and uh, I had the feeling if I'd have been been there been there, I'd have probably been one of them that got shipped overseas, but since I wasn't there, they couldn't, they had to pick those that were there. Mm -hmm. Where were you instead? Were you just not present? Pardon? Where were you instead? Do you remember? Where was I? Yeah. Oh, we went to a church that weekend up at Laddie, I think it was, where 
Yeah. Wow, so that one weekend could have changed everything if you didn't go. Yeah. Basically. Wow, that's interesting. Uh -huh. Um so like what was your biggest fear before like when the war was starting? Did you were you afraid of it? Were you um, were you worried about anything in particular? Cause, like, no, I can't say I was worried about anything. <laughs> Because you were in um, Ohio, you said, for three years. Um, did you get to see your family very much? Or did they come up and visit you? Or Oh, yeah, they, they came and visited. Um, so did that, you said you were around 26. Did that, like, kind of stop your daily life? Like, that's kind of three years out of your life. Um that you had to like abruptly stop and do something different. Did that affect anything? Or I, re I really never thought of it that way. Really? What were you doing before you were drafted? I uh, I had cream routes and went through the country and picked up cream at farmers and hauled it into Peoria. That's what I was doing before I got drafted. Wow, that's interesting. And. Uh, of course, I'd, I'd get done with that job and maybe about one o'clock in the afternoon. And then, well, like during planting season or harvest season, uh, I'd help farmers then, you know. Mm -hmm. there, were, there were a lot more farmers back then than there are now. There are a lot of small farms, you know. And yeah. Every, everybody had cows and chickens and hogs. And, and they, they, with their milk, they'd run it through a separator and it would make, separate the cream from the milk, you know. Mm. And that's, that's what they'd sell. <laughs> and then instead of, instead of uh, drinking skim milk like we do nowadays, they fed that to the hogs. Yeah. So that's one of the things that you did, huh? was uh, distribute that. Um, you said you went on like cream routes. So is that one of the things that you did? What's that? You went like you distributed that. Is that what, was that your job before you left yeah. to be drafted? Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. So when you did get to um, the army bases for basic training, what were like some of the conditions? Did you sleep in nice places? Did they give you good food, or was it? Oh yeah, we lived in barracks then, and we had beds <clears throat> the one bed you sleep at the head that way and the one that ne caught next to you be just the opposite each his head would be your, your feet and you'd be in a barracks what they call barracks you live there and oh there's probably I don't know how many Sometimes there were two stories, and it'd be full of soldiers, you know. Yeah. At noon, we'd go to the mess hall and eat, and, and of course, in the morning, we'd go out to have uh, a reveille, what they called reveille, and do our, our calisthenics, that was exercises, you mm -hmm. know. They'd take us out on, we had to learn close order drill and marches, take marches and, and basic training, you know, and, and uh, get you prepared for, uh, for war. So were the quarters pretty cramped? Were there a lot of people, like, in close quarters? Was it kind of hard to have your own personal space? We had foot lockers, trunk, trunks, you know, at that time, be at the foot of your bed, and you'd have your belongings there, and you didn't, didn't have all kind of stuff then like we have now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we didn't think much of it then, you know, it was basic training, and that's what's it. What are the kind of things that they taught you to do? Like, if you can think back, what were some of the drills that they made you do that stands out to you? Oh, 
Oh. Uh, one thing you you didn't you wanted to obey orders, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to go AWOL. You know what AWOL is? Absent without leave. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, huh? that's <laughs> not the best thing to do. Yeah, you, <clears throat> if you'd done that, why you'd get penned up, you know. Mm -hmm. Privileges taken away from you altogether. Then. Yeah. It, uh, there were six of us boys. Four of us were in World War II. Uh, two in the two in the Marines one in the Navy and I was in the Army in World War II and we all came back home and my youngest brother then went to Korea and he lost his life over there. Step, the landmine blew up and he was killed. That was your youngest brother? What happened to your other brothers? Were they also drafted or were they yeah. at home? Well, drafted or they, I think in the Marines, you, uh, what do you call that? You volunteered for that. Oh, yeah. You know, in the Navy, I think, too. I'm, I'm not too sure whether they had any others. I mean, uh, draftees in the Navy or not in the Marines. Maybe they did. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Were you home when he learned that he had been killed or were you um, in uh, Dayton, Ohio when you had learned that? Like who had told you when you Pardon? Uh, when your brother was landed on, uh, stepped on the mine where were you when you learned about that? Well I was uh, see that was in 51 I was living up at Sister Park, farming Okay, so you were already out of basic yeah. training. You were done already. Oh yeah, I, World War Two was over then, you know. Oh okay. I was in World War Two. What war was he in then? In the Korean War. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you said so that was your younger brother. Did you were you the oldest brother, or did you have other older brothers? No, I was the oldest. Um. Was that just one other brother, or did you say you had another brother, too? There's six of us. Okay. Do you know what happened to the, the rest of them? Did they also have stories like that, or were they like you and they came home? Well, the rest of them all went overseas, you know. They saw cotton, they saw war. Mm -hmm. The Marines and the Navy, you know. What were their names? My oldest brother was Irvin. I R V I N. The next one was Glenn. He was in the Navy. Irvin was in the Marines. Glenn in the Navy. Lester was in the, the Marines. And of course, Oscar was the youngest one that went to Korea. Was he the only one that never made it back? Or yeah, he was the only one. Was that difficult for your family and you? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Did that, so if he went, he that means he went after you. So you had already been in World War II and then he went into the Korean War afterward. Did you like give him advice before he left or were you scared for him when he had left? Because you, you had already been in basic training, so. No, I wasn't. See, I was uh, 90 miles away, so I wasn't home anymore mm -hmm. then. But he left. And so when, well, we can backtrack now to like when you were in basic training, um, 
was it hard to adjust? I mean, you were far away from home with people you'd never met before, and you were doing things that you weren't used to. Was that difficult to adjust? Or? Well, not really. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of us together there, mm -hmm. you know. We just accepted what we had to do. Yeah. Do you have any stories from it? Oh, can't just re recall any certain stories mm -hmm. about it. I don't know if you were the kind of people that were mischievous and <laughs> tried to bend around the rules sometimes, or when uh, <clears throat> when we were out at Fort Riley, Kansas. You know we. We were quarantined. We couldn't go to town like mm -hmm. after hours, like some of them that had been that were stationed there. You know, after hours, where they could they could go to town. Of course, you'd have to be back at a certain time, but we didn't get to do that, and uh, it got pretty boring. You know, <laughs> and you couldn't go anywhere. And, had to stay where you was living. So what did you do for fun? I don't know whether we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember having any fun. <laughs> I don't blame you, honestly. No, you didn't try to create any games or play pranks on each other just for the fun of it. Oh, we probably did, but I just don't recall yeah. any certain. Yeah, definitely. Any certain things. Mm. So, do you, um, like, were you still friends with the people that you um, ended up staying with in the barracks? Do you, like, if you would meet them now and talk to them now, let's say that they would come and see you, like, what were the, what something you would talk about with them? Uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of those, a lot of them had reunions mm -hmm. with their their outfits you know yeah but we our outfit just never had a reunion but I there were some there were a couple that were really close to me you know and afterwards we just make individual individual visits to go visit mm -hmm. them you know yeah So you never had to actually like put your training into practice. You basically spent three years training, but you never actually had to go and like practice that or defend anything, right? Or did you did you end up going having to go somewhere uh, and actually use that training? <clears throat> no, I I never had to go anywhere else to, mm -hmm. to do that. So you mostly um, spent time at your post doing office work and helping the people who were about to leave, yeah. making sure they were healthy, right? Right. Oh, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. You kind of got to see like the big picture of it more than just the the small. Okay, you go here and do this mission, and not really knowing like what the purpose behind it. You got to see the big picture pretty much. Would you say that? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so while you were there, did you miss back home? Like, was there someone that you thought of? Well, we'd write for... back and forth, mm -hmm. you know. And Who would you write to? Different ones that we knew back home, you know, and our folks. And, yeah. You know. Um. So you mostly wrote to your family, or did you have friends that you were talking to back home? Yeah. What would you have, do you think back to what you would have written them, like, what would you have talked to them about, just daily basic training, how you were? Like? Yeah, what we were doing at the time, and, mm -hmm. and the same way back home, you know, they be in harvest time, or planting time, or making hay, or Paul and manure. <laughs> you know what that is, don't you, Paul? I sure do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Definitely.
and get, you know. Did your brothers, do you remember your brothers here. talking about any stories you had when they, or they had when they came back? Something that stuck out? Never, to never you? seemed to talk much about it. Is it hard for you to talk about it, or is it more of, uh, is it different for you? Well, it's have different you for me, yeah. you know. I didn't have to go through what they did. Yeah. And so, all together different. Yeah. Did you ever try to talk to them about it, just to get an idea of what it felt like? Oh, I have asked them, yeah. Of course, uh... <clears throat> I have one brother and one sister still mm -hmm. living. And this one brother is over at Washington at the, at the villas there. Uh, the villas of Hollybrook? Yeah. Oh, my mom used to manage villas of Hollybrook. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was like last year, right? Or I think, something yeah, that it was she used to manage. So she might have even about treated him. I don't know. Two to three years ago. Two, at least yeah. two years ago, yes. That's the one that's off. Is that off 24? Yes, right. Right on the, the Are you talking about that one, the Will of Hollybrook? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which brother was that? Lester. Okay. Lester Ross. And his wife, his wife is still living. And uh, he's 93 and she's just a little bit older. She still plays golf. And <laughs> <laughs> Does he remember a lot of it like you do? Oh, yeah. You seem to remember a lot. His mind's good. And of course, he's, he isn't able to get around as well as I am. His legs are really bad, balance. But they, his wife was there with him. They have a two-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. So they, she's able to you know, help him a lot. Yeah, definitely. Um, are you in contact with him a lot? Or? Yeah, I, I've been to visit him. That's great. Call him up. Yeah. Visit with him. That's good to keep family close. Yeah. Especially if they're not even that far away, you know? Mm -hmm. um, do you need a break? Like, or, like, get water or something? Pardon? Or, do you need a break to get water or something? Or? No, I'm okay. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of... What else I could ask you? Do you have any ideas, Dad? Um, we were we were married sixty nine years. Wow, that's my great. wife was ninety two when she passed away, and after we retired, we spent a lot of our winters in Sarasota, Florida, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that. I think one question that I would that comes to my mind is, as you talk about the the sacrifice that you and your brothers made, you know, you spent years of your life either stateside or on in the European theater, or like you explained, your brother Oscar lost his life in the Korean War. I don't think Lizelle's generation realize realizes that freedom. Uh, they might realize it, but uh, your generation, uh, Harold, there was a price to pay for freedom. I mean, Hitler and and uh, Hirohito, the emperor of Japan, they they had to be deposed. You know, uh, they had to, somebody had to fight them, and it it, it didn't happen without cost. And uh, the, and we're still free today because of what your generation did. And what they sacrificed, and that's why they call his generation the greatest generation. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have uh, ten grandchildren, and my one grandson is in Japan, teaching English over there, and he fell in love with the. Japanese teacher over there got <laughs> married this past year they had a baby girl and they were here to visit me isn't that something and her dad came along and oh, we had a nice visit oh yeah. that's great isn't that something 
I never never got to go to their wedding or got to meet him before, you know. Yeah, um, it, 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 took, it took a long time for the Japanese to be welcome over here after World War II because there was so much damage done, you know, so much damage because of the war. Yeah, but... Did you have friends that went to war that never came back or that came back and told you about stories? Yeah, I had some. I, I mean... I knew them, knew them, but really not in, we weren't close. You know. mm -hmm. Do you remember what happened to Harvey? You said he was one of your closer friends that you guys got separated because he went to a different camp. Well, he, he got come home too and he started farming, got, was a farmer after he got back out of, back in civilian life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I visited him, and by the way, his wife was named Roth, but no relation to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he uh, he lost a daughter because in her teens, and, and then he he died at a young age, got sick, and had to go. To a nursing home in his last days and suffered and passed away then. Mm -hmm. and his wife, I got I got to know him pretty good, you know, we'd visit each other and uh, she I think it was a year ago that she passed away and she was in the nursing home too and she died and she was they didn't even show her she was so thin and frail that they didn't show her at all. Mm -hmm. So he did get to come back then. Did you ever see him after that or spend time with him? Huh? Did you ever see him after Harvey uh, after or spend time with him? Or did you just kind of hear what happened with him as time went on? Oh yeah, we we visited each mm -hmm. other before he got sick, you know. Yeah. Not we didn't, you know, back in those days you didn't travel as much as you do now. Things were different, and maybe you'd get, get to see him once or twice or three times in a lifetime. That is true. People do travel a lot nowadays. Yeah. You can have family in Wisconsin or across the state, and still see them twice a year because of technology now. Yeah. Um, did he, did anyone that you ever talked to ever talk about adjusting back from war? Because I know coming back from that is difficult um, and hard to do. Did, did anyone come back that you knew before that just were completely changed? They just weren't the same. I never knew anyone mm -hmm. like that. No. Maybe your brothers, did, were they different or were they just mostly no, silent? They, about it? they seemed to be normal. Mm -hmm. They all, they all uh, had families and uh, lived you know, normal lives. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself thinking about the time that you spent um, as a soldier or was it just kind of something that happened to you and it is what it is? Never spent a lot of time mm -hmm. thinking about it. Yeah. And that's all I have for now. I mean, I'm trying to think of what other questions I have. You have 
kind of been going off the book. <laughs> it's just fascinating to learn about that. I really enjoy learning about World War II. It's one of my favorite time periods to learn about. So it's just interesting to see it from your perspective. <laughs> I had an experience there when I was an ambulance driver. They had an open house there at Wright Field one time, and they had a big crowd, of course, and there's a you know, big fence around the complex there. Mm -hmm. Cars parked all the way around. They had an air show. They had this plane that had propellers on the back that are in the front had propellers in the back. And he he made a loop over the field and lost control of it and uh, crashed at the edge of the field, hit the fence that was going around. And this one car parked there it had five people in it and a newborn babe was wrapped in, in, uh, wrapped in, like cloth or something. Yeah. yeah. And that baby's the only one that survived in that wow. car. Oh my of course, pilot got killed. Were you the first person to the scene, or did you hear about that? I was one of the ambulances mm -hmm. there that had to take this one woman to the hospital, and she was just like cooked, you know. Mm -hmm. She was conscious yet. We took her to the hospital, but she passed away. And of course, you just... You she was everything. severely burned? Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like I could... Well, she was cooked, wasn't burned, you know. <laughs> in the heat or whatever it was. And, and yeah. it sprayed fuel all over the car, you know. And yeah. I could kind of smell that burnt flesh for a long time afterwards. Mm -hmm. Cooked wow. flesh. Yeah. Did the pilot also pass away? Hmm? The pilot also oh, passed yeah. away, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the air show for? Was that something that the military was doing, or was that just that, nearby? That was something that the right field put on. You know, okay. For, for the public. Was that the biggest story that you remember? One of the bigger ones? or Yeah. Did a lot of stuff happen like that often? No, it didn't happen mm -hmm. often at all. It's the only one that I, I ever had any, any experience with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really sad. You can definitely mm -hmm. see death even when you're not on the battlefield. <laughs> Especially when you're doing medical things. Yeah. That was at Dayton, Ohio, right, Harold? Yeah. That, right that's field. still a big, that's a big air base today. And there's yeah, a big, it's, big it's museum out there. It's called Wright-Patterson Field now. They combined the field, you know. Mm -hmm. And they have, they have uh, hangars there with all, all the airplanes from Wright, Brothers on, on all up to today. Yeah, yeah, they probably have a stealth bomber there today. They got them all, <laughs> and they got them. It's in more than one hangar too, you know, with all those planes. And I, it, I was out there when they just started that, and they didn't have them all yet, you know, and didn't have, they hadn't didn't have them in both hangars yet. And, and uh, haven't been back since. They had the Rose Bowl on on New Year's Day this year, 2019, and uh, they had a stealth bomber flyover. And uh, it was it was it's a magnificent plane. Oh. That it looks like a something like out of you know, almost out of 
out of the current time, you know, it's 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 still a plane that doesn't look natural, but it's it's designed to sneak up on. It's a bomber plane, mm -hmm. and it's it's really well built and aer aerodynamically, it's just quite a mar quite a marvelous plane. you came back did they have ceremonies for you guys for serving and no <clears throat> it seemed like they they do more now yeah for veterans than they did then right really wow yeah. i didn't realize that like this past year you know they've had veterans observances different places like at Liberty Church over there, you know, they had a uh, ribeye dinner for all the <laughs> veterans that wanted to come. That's that's the second time I've been there. And high school always has uh, an observance, you know, for mm -hmm. Veterans, veterans Day. Day yeah. and, and the Methodist Church here in Roanoke, they had veterans program for the veterans here and boy that that was really nice mm -hmm. you know they didn't used to do that yeah it does seem like they do that more nowadays yeah i think that's a good idea because that that's that's an, another way to capture and to keep in our to keep in our current mind what the sacrifice that was made right. in, for freedom for know? everyone that was involved yeah. in it yeah 